So after the horrific events in Charlottesville, Donald Trump had a chance to speak out uh, about it and uh, he absolutely blew that opportunity. Uh, condemning uh, Nazis is about as low a bar as you can possibly have and he couldn't clear it. And not only condemning Nazis, but Nazis committing violence in America and he couldn't clear that bar. So first, before uh, uh, Fields uh, ran into the crowd with his car, there was already mayhem and violence and uh, right wing throwing uh, tear gas canisters according to the reporters at the scene and tear gas and all other things that was happening. At that point, uh, Donald Trump starts tweeting. He says, we all must be united and condemn all that hate stands for. There's no place for this kind of violence in America. Let's come together as one. So, so far, no problem. Uh, I would have been far more clear on who was committing the violence, but this is the beginning so far. He, and then a little bit later in the Morning on Saturday, he says, am in Bedminster uh, for meetings and press conference on Virginia. All that we have done and are doing to make it better, but Charlottesville, sad. Okay, still no calling out of the white nationalists who organized this rally, Unite the Right. No calling out of the torches that they were carrying, the swastikas, the Klan gear, etc. Let alone uh, clearly identifying who's doing the violence. And uh, the white nationalists who organized this, including Richard Spencer, took this as an encouraging sign. Saw Trump's tweets and said, did Trump just denounce Antifa? Meaning uh, those are the protesters who some call uh, leftists, but are more inclined towards anarchy. And, uh, and so in other words, the white nationalists going, see, Trump didn't call us out. We think he's referring to the counter protesters. Well, if you don't say clearly, they get to make that claim. So Trump made it way worse when he finally did speak out and said this. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides, on many sides. It's been going on for a long time in our country. Not Donald Trump, not Barack Obama. It's been going on for a long, long time. So, of course, he mentions not Donald Trump, not Barack Obama, because he thinks people are going to blame him for it. And he says, "Nope, it's not my fault." Well, then why don't you say the white nationalists shouldn't have done it? Why don't you say the KKK and the neo Nazis that were rallying together shouldn't have done it? It's not that hard. It's literally the easiest thing you can do. He doesn't want to say it because you know why? Because he thinks that's his base, and he doesn't want to upset his base. It's grotesque, man, because they're gonna take it as a green light and as I'm about to show you, they did. Now, uh, he let this fester for two days. Other Republican senators are going on TV saying it's domestic terror. Ted Cruz saying it's domestic terrorism. Jeff Sessions, Attorney General saying domestic terrorism. Uh, and and s saying that it was clearly the, the uh, white nationalists who were doing it and the far right wing that was doing it. But Trump won't say it, and they took it as a green light. But finally, he comes out and makes this statement on Monday. As I said on Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. Those who spread violence in the name of bigotry strike at the very core of America. And that took two days. Uh, meanwhile, Ivanka's tweeting, everybody's all over TV. Finally, after all the pressure in the world and every advisor saying, hey, idiot, it's not hard to condemn the KKK. No, it, you didn't win because of the neo Nazis. Yes, the neo Nazis were probably on your side. Uh, well, that's part of them, Lee, because they just showed up in red hats saying, make America great again at the Charlottesville rally, let alone all of the polling evidence, etc. But they're not the core of your voters. And by the way, you're so stupid. The core of your voters are people who couldn't stand Hillary Clinton. <laughs> not Nazis in America. But Trump thinks, hey, that's my guys, that's my boys, that's why I didn't want to call them out. 
Finally, when he does hear, he's reading from a teleprompter. Somebody had to write it out for him. They're like, God forbid that we let Trump speak off the cuff on this. He will say horrific things. Write it for him and make sure the schmuck says it word for word. And then when he does, he says, you know, I condemn you know violence from every place, including the KKK and neo Nazis. Well, wow, are you not merciful? Thank you for finally showing up. So Jim Acosta afterwards is going to try to ask him some questions and listen to their interaction. Mr. President, can you explain why you did not condemn those hate groups by name over the weekend? They've been condemned. They have been condemned. And, and why are we not having a press conference today? You said on Friday you had a press conference. We had a press conference. We just had a press conference. Can we ask you some more questions, then, sir? It doesn't bother me at all, but you know, I like real news, not fake news. Give fake news. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, haven't you spread a lot of fake news yourself, sir? Thank you, They've been condemned. <laughs> what else do you want? Can we have a press conference where we ask you questions? This is a press conference. Can I ask you a question? No, you're fake news. Okay, so apparently not a press conference. So most importantly, you, you know, you can get into a silly debate of, well, I mean, he probably in his head meant the KKK when he said many, many sides. Uh, well, uh, you might have that debate, but the neo Nazis did not. At the Daily Stormer, uh, they were thrilled. That's a neo Nazi website. And when they saw Trump blame many sides, here's what they wrote on their blog. They said Trump comments were good. He didn't attack us. He just said the nation should come together. Nothing specific against us. He said that we need to study why people are so angry and implied that there was hate on both sides. So he implied that Antifa are haters. There was virtually no counter signaling. Of us at all, he said he loves us all. Daily Stormers named after a Nazi propaganda during World War II, a publication that did that kind of propaganda. So here are the neo Nazis in America saying, see, he, come, he said oh, it's on many sides. That means he loves us all. You know what that is? It's called a dog whistle, except. It used to be a dog whistle that was subtle. Now it's a human whistle. We can all hear it. And certainly the Daily Stormer heard it. And they viewed Trump's message as overwhelmingly positive for neo Nazis in America. That's not us saying it, that's them saying it. They went on to say, no condemnation at all. When asked to condemn, Trump just walked out of the room. Really, really good. God bless him. So here's where we are, guys, where Nazis are saying, God bless the President of the United States. He's been really, really good to us. He loves us. And that's why he wouldn't condemn us. So Trump knew what message he was sending. If you're not well versed in politics and you think, well, he seemed to condemn some sort of violence. No, 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 that message was received. And for white supremacists all across the country, it was a giant blinking green light. Go forward because when I condemn it a couple of days later because they make me do it, I don't really mean it. Now. How dangerous are these guys? So they say things like, we have an army, this is the beginning of a war. Now look, uh, you can talk about symbolic armies and everybody does that. And so I, I wouldn't read you that quote if it wasn't for the second part, the beginning of a war. So do they mean literally violence and war? Well, we saw it happen in Charlottesville, but here's more from the Daily Stormer again in re regards to what, what happened this weekend. He said, and to everyone know this. We are now at war and we are not going to back down. We are going to go bigger than Charlottesville. We are going to go huge. We are going to take over the country. We learned a lot today and we are going to remember what we learned. This has only just begun. One of the things they learned today is that the president is on their side and won't call out Nazis. This is what we've sunk to. Again, if you think, oh no, a president taking his time and waiting two days. Imagine if it was a Muslim radical who had done the attack. You think Trump waits two days? He, he usually tweets before we find out who even did it. When he thinks it's Muslims, he'll take credit for it. After Orlando, he said, I appreciate all the congratulations um, uh, for me predicting that it was Muslims. But when it comes to white supremacists and domestic terrorism, all of a sudden he can't find it. A phone to tweet from. 
He can't find a camera. The guy who loves cameras can't find one for two whole days and finally comes us fine, including the KKK and the Nazis, I guess. So in case you were confused about that message, the Nazis were not. Nazis in America are thrilled and they say they're gonna go bigger than Charlottesville. Thanks a lot, Donald Trump, we appreciate it. And now among the many terrible excuses given is from uh, Tom Bossert, who's a White House Homeland Security Advisor. He went on television and said this, making an excuse for Trump's inaction. What I would say is that the president not only condemned the violence and stood up at a time and a moment when calm was necessary and, di and, and didn't dignify the names of these groups and people, uh, but rather addressed the fundamental issue. And so Jake, what you need to focus on is the rest of his statement. The president didn't just call for human beings to respect one another, which is his pragmatist core fundamental bare minimum, uh, but he called for ideally Americans to love one another. <laughs> so uh, the new excuse is no, we don't want to digni dignify them by saying their names. You don't say their names when they're terrorists, really, because here's Donald Trump back in uh, November of 2015 as he's running for president. When will President Obama issue the words radical Islamic terrorism? He can't say it, and unless he will, the problem will not be solved. Back then, you gotta say their names, you gotta say their names. Oh, It's my voters, it's my supporters, it's the people who love me the most in America, Nazis and KKK and white supremacists. Oh, Don't say their name, that would legitimize them, wink. And one more tweet from Trump in June of 2016. He said, is President Obama going to finally mention the words radical Islamic terrorism? If he doesn't, he should immediately resign in disgrace. If you can't say the words KKK and neo-Nazis and white supremacists for two whole days, then maybe we should apply the same standard to you that you made up for Obama. Resign in disgrace, because that's what you are. You're absolutely disgraceful. If you like this clip of the Young Turks, you know there's a whole live two hour show, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern every day. And you can download it or stream it and watch it without ads if you become a member. TYTnetwork.com slash join.